Hello and welcome to our recording of our webinar entitled Engaging with the Visual Arts Specification. The purpose of this webinar is to support you in taking your understanding of the Visual Arts Specification to a deeper level and to answer any questions that have been popping up. This webinar was aired online on the 20th of March 2018. So the first question we asked participants on the night was what aspect of the junior cycle visual arts specification are you most looking forward to engaging with in your art room? At the end of the presentation, we will check back in to consider some of the responses that we got in. So our learning intentions for this webinar are to deepen our understanding of the visual arts specification and to explore the potential in learning outcomes when planning for our students. We have a lot of information to address and some will be relevant information you may be familiar with from our cluster days, but it is important to revisit to frame tonight's webinar. Here is our schedule for this evening. At this point, we have met almost a thousand art teachers around the country. So our first session will be a short recap on visual art in the context of the framework for junior cycle and a reminder of our aims, strands, and an emphasis on our elements. Session two is where we will take a closer look at the learning outcomes and demonstrate different approaches to planning for your students. As this is the first in our series of webinars, we are specifically focusing on learning outcomes. And for our second webinar, which we are hoping to release in early autumn, we will focus on classroom-based assessment one. Between each session, we will pause to answer your most commonly asked questions relating to that session. All of our information in this webinar and in our workshops is taken from these three documents. First, there is the framework for junior cycle, which outlines the key educational changes the Department of Education and Skills has put in place for all students at lower second level. The second document is our specification, which was published in autumn 2016, and it contains the aim, rationale, strands, elements, and learning outcomes for junior cycle visual art. And finally, the visual art assessment guidelines, which details all of the information on both of our classroom-based assessments. You can find them by going on to jct.ie click on visual art and key documents. And there you will find links to the three key documents that will support you over the next number of years. On this slide, you will see some of the key changes affecting our teachers and students. Junior certificate is changing to junior cycle. Before we had a syllabus, which is generally content driven. And now we have a specification which is learning outcome orientated. And art, craft and design is now referred to as visual art. CBA stands for classroom-based assessment of which every subject will have two. SLAR stands for subject learning and assessment review meeting, which is the meeting teachers will participate in at the end of the CBA process. And JCPA, stands for Junior Cycle Profile of Achievement, which outlines student achievements in CBA 1, CBA 2, the SEC component, and other areas of learning. As you may be aware from the whole school CPD day, the framework for Junior Cycle follows the above format. It consists of eight principles, 24 statements of learning, and eight key skills all of the junior cycle specifications are supported by this framework. There are six statements of learning directly linked to visual art, and they are outlined here. This places visual art in an integral position within the curriculum. You might remember in our workshops, we looked at statement of learning 23, which is the student brings an idea from conception to realization. This is directly linked to our classroom-based assessment one, which is entitled 
from process to realisation. This is a hugely important statement of learning for students to access, as this is where students can generate new ideas, they can create a new product or construct a new point of view. In order to stimulate creative thinking, students must first access many layers of learning, including knowledge, understanding, evaluation and more. Visual art at junior cycle is a subject that requires a minimum of 200 hours contact time over three years. Visual art is a common level course. And finally, there is a focus on continuity here, as now there are similarities between the primary and post-primary curriculums in terms of the structure of each specification. Our specification will build on the practice already in place at primary level, and this will enable our students to develop the key skills they will need for lifelong learning. There will be a common thread throughout the various stages of a student's experience of art and other subjects, right through from early years to primary, on through post-primary, third level and beyond. As you are aware, an interim Leaving Cert Revised Assessment Framework has been implemented this year in the form of coursework. The Leaving Certificate Syllabus is currently under review and will also reflect the changes at Junior Cycle. So here is our visual representation of the aim of Junior Cycle Visual Art. This video scribe was shown during our CPD day and it's available to download on our website, jct.ie, in the resources section. During our workshops, we asked you to consider your first year students, the classes you might currently be teaching. We asked you to consider what aspirations you had for those students and what would you like them to take away after three years in your care? The responses were amazing all over the country and they really demonstrated how much we valued our students' development, but not just in knowledge and practical skills, but actually as a whole person. And that personal growth was of huge importance for many teachers. Here are some examples. As you can see, the post has demonstrated a strong link with our aim for the new Junior Cycle Visual Art course and really showed how our teachers have a very strong shared vision of how important our subject is to a young person's growth and development. There are three strands in visual art which we are all familiar with and they are art, craft and design. Students may study them together or in isolation. Interwoven through our three strands are our five elements, which are really important. Now we will take some time to show you images associated with these elements, and they're kindly narrated by some of our junior cycle students. Critical and visual language is used by students to discuss, understand, and assess an artistic work, whether it is their own or another's. It allows students to explore imagery more fully and in a more thoughtful way. Students can use critical and visual language to communicate their ideas to their teacher, other students or the wider community. The ability for the student to use it builds a high level of competence and confidence when they respond to and engage with the visual culture of the contemporary or historical world and natural and built environments. Drawing is the fundamental language integral to all of the activities undertaken by students in the three strands of art, craft and design. It is essential for inquiry, expression, documenting and communicating visual information. Drawing from observation, including primary sources and life drawing 
and experimental and imaginative drawing as well as developing ideas through 2D, 3D or digital methods are important for students to experience. Drawing is also an art form itself. Students need to experience and develop their drawing skills over the three years of junior cycle. Visual culture and appreciation recognises that the modern world has become a more visual place encompassing a wide range of visual stimuli such as architecture and urban design to advertising, new media, the internet, fine art, craft, design, photography, fashion and more. Non-text-based cues and images are visually read at a much faster rate than text-based messages, at times bombarded with images. Students need to understand and decode these visual messages, as well as the visual culture of other societies too. This knowledge and understanding needs to be communicated using the language familiar to the students, but also the critical and visual language associated with the three strands of art, craft and design. Art elements and design principles are the building blocks of any work of art a student will create. Their application in 2D, 3D or digital works can be analysed by considering their use either collectively or individually. The art elements include the dot, colour, line, shape, tone, texture and pattern. The principles of design include balance, tension, symmetry, harmony, light, space, scale and contrast. Media choice and use is an important element that cross cuts the three strands of art, craft and design. Media are the means to interact, create, connect and communicate with others. In the work which students undertake to create they use traditional tools, methods, or new contemporary or digital means. Media also encompasses the knowledge of techniques or processes too. We will be building our understanding of the five elements throughout the next number of years. But for now, just to recap, they are across all three strands and are of equal importance and our learning outcomes have been developed from these. In our workshop on the 20th of March, we asked teachers the following question in a poll. Which of the five elements are you most comfortable with? Here is a screenshot of the results from our poll. This was a nice way to gauge the audience on the evening better and now we know that more support might be needed around visual culture and appreciation. We will now take a short break from our presentation to answer any questions that have been coming in, particularly around the context of the course outline we have just viewed. So I'm going to pass you over to Ruth now to go through those questions. Thank you, Gemma. OK, so the first question we have here um, is what is the difference between the old course and the new course? OK, so the first main difference with junior cycle visual art is that the learning that it is learning outcome based, which means that the specification outlines the student learning to be experienced over the three years, as opposed to a content list, which may have focused on individual topics or disciplines. There is also a clear emphasis on the develop, developing the artistic process, experiencing the CBA one in second year and the CBA 2 in third year will provide students with opportunities to experience working with visual art processes over two years rather than one which is presently the case. With the dual approach to assessment, students will benefit from formative assessment during their learning experiences as well as a summative assessment of their learning. Both will be celebrated and reported on in the junior cycle profile of achievement. Uh, another question we have here is, why is visual art at common level? So in art, I suppose we have always taught mixed ability classes and common level in visual art has the advantage of ensuring that students are not directed into a particular level of learning at too early a stage in their academic and personal development. This approach will enable students to have the experience and aspiration to achieve to their highest possible level so that they, they have greater options available to them at the senior cycle, including studying at higher level in the Leaving Certificate examination. And the third question here is, is around the area of design. What is involved in the design strand? 
So if we take a look at the specification, it states, design is the process of planning, problem solving, and creating. It can be a response to a brief, a need, or a situation. Emphasizing the process of planning, problem solving, and completion, withdrawing as a means of thinking, Formal visual elements and imagery are used to communicate messages and ideas. And that's quote M on page 17 of the visual arts specification. So when looking at the learning outcomes in the design strand, you will see that the learning across the five elements is on, is on engaging with the design process outlined above. While the visual arts specification offers a unique opportunity for students to learn about the design process, it also uh, allows opportunities for students to learn about particular design disciplines, whether that be graphic design, uh, communication, fashion design, garden design, jewellery design, etc. So with teachers with their students are free to respond to a design brief of their own choice or respond to a need or situation in the school, locality or wider community. So that's uh, the last question um, in the first section of questions. I'll pass back over to Gemma. Thanks a million, Ruth. So in this session now, we are going to look at our learning outcomes, as that is where we will begin to plan for our junior cycle students. There is an opportunity in our workshops to collaborate with other art teachers and to build links with other schools. We encourage you to make these links and to continue the professional dialogue in upcoming SLAR meetings, which will take place late next year in 2019 for our teachers. Collaboration is equally important in making sense of learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are statements in curriculum specifications to describe the knowledge, understanding, skills and values students should be able to demonstrate after a period of learning. Here are a couple of points that are important to be aware of. There are 15 learning outcomes in each of the three strands. There is no hierarchy of importance. They are numbered, however, but this is only to support planning. And finally, they are to be developed with our students over the three years of junior cycle. Please don't view learning outcomes as something to be ticked off, as this is not how they are intended to be used. Learning outcomes are to be developed over the three years of junior cycle, and therefore a learning outcome focused on at a particular point in first year will be revisited again and again as it continues to support the student's learning over the three years of junior cycle and beyond. Here is our learning outcome poster. You can download it on jct.ie in the visual art resources sections. Across the top, you can see the three strands of art, craft and design. And along the side, you can see the five elements that we have just looked at. All of the learning outcomes are grouped by both the strand and the element. If we take a closer look at the strand of art and the element of critical and visual language, we can see numbering along the side. As I said earlier, these numbers are to support planning and not to suggest a hierarchy of importance. If we move now to the strand of art, and in particular, the element of drawing, we can see learning outcome 1.4, which is a learning outcome that will be developed again and again, rather than achieved in one body of work. This is because the learning outcomes are for three years. Therefore, the learning outcomes focused on at a point in time will not have been completed or ticked off, but will continue to support the students over the three years of junior cycle and beyond. For example, for my first years, I might decide to take learning outcome 1.4 at any particular point in the year. And I might wish to focus on teaching, demonstrate how they use drawing to observe the human figure, which can be revisited many times throughout the year. 
Drawing from observation might be through two dimensions or three dimensions. For example, a drawing could be through wire or drawing through clay sculpture. Or we might wish the students to analyze or study a section of the human figure in more detail. That might be focusing on portraiture, hands or hair. To demonstrate how we might begin to plan for your students, we have decided to look at some departmental approaches to collaborative planning. But before we do, we'd like you to think about some of these considerations. When we consider department planning, either in a one person department or a larger department, there are some areas to think about. First of all, we need to consider the age and stage of our students. That is, what is relevant or of interest to our students and appropriate based on the learning that has occurred up to this point. That is to say, we build on the prior learning. Secondly, we might select a number of learning outcomes or parts of learning outcomes across the three strands. The learning outcomes we pick are the focus for the unit of learning, even though there will be other key skills students will be using throughout the unit of learning. Thirdly, we might consider if we will use a theme or a stimulus and consider the discipline or media we might demonstrate the learning through. Next, we align assessment with the learning outcomes selected for the unit of learning. The assessment is really about stepping back from the learning and finding out how do we know our students have achieved the learning we set out to achieve? It is crucial that the assessment is directly aligned to the learning outcomes selected. The assessment should capture the learning that has taken place. If the students are able to achieve the assessment, we know they have achieved the learning. And finally, reflection. Reflection here is twofold, reflecting on what worked well during the unit and also reflecting on how learning outcomes were selected and developed so as to ensure that some learning outcomes were not overlooked. There is sometimes a temptation to select learning outcomes we are becoming familiar with, but all 45 learning outcomes must be developed over the three years. There is a section for reflection in our sample planning template online. So to demonstrate how you might begin to plan for your students, we have decided to look at some departmental approaches to collaborative planning. We begin by looking at our learning outcome poster. This is a shift in focus for us as our teachers, because traditionally we may have thought about what disciplines we will cover first such as printing, batik, etc. But now we begin by looking at the learning outcomes and we take some time to consider what do we want our students to learn first? And then we decide on the discipline or approach that may be best suited to the learning. To demonstrate a variety of approaches to planning using learning outcomes, we have decided to look through the lens of the elements. The elements we have focused on are media, drawing, and the art elements and design principles. We have also selected three learning outcomes, 2.11, 1.4, and 2.14. For the purpose of this webinar, we have decided to focus on first year students in term three. In the following number of recordings, we demonstrate a number of different approaches to planning using these learning outcomes. This is a sample of an approach our department has taken to planning for visual art for first years. This is an overview of our sample plan. And it is for first years in term three, weeks one to three. The students have already learned about a variety of art elements. So we decided this time to concentrate on the design principles of balance and tension. When selecting learning outcome 2.11, we agreed to focus on contemporary craft work from their own culture. In learning outcome 2.14, they will use media to make craft work. And from learning outcome 1.4,
we will concentrate on making drawings which are used to observe and record the world around them. We chose the County Galway born milliner Philip Tracy, as his millinery challenges traditional interpretations of hats, which is particularly important in our coeducational school context. The students will learn to use images sourced online to discuss, describe, and analyse craft work. They will learn to work collaboratively to explore and experiment with materials and techniques to discuss and reflect. And how will we know what they know? They will be able to participate in discussions about images of craft work which have been sourced online. The students will explore and experiment to make craft pieces, pieces which demonstrate balance and tension. They will use their experimental pieces as primary sources to make observational drawings in their visual art sketch pad. And they will continue their journey as reflective learners by reflecting both orally and in their visual art sketch pads. This is our sample approach to planning as a department. This is a department plan that outlines a short learning experience for first year students. It's planned for the third term, so we're hoping to draw on previous learning from earlier in the year and build on this to develop further understanding. The first learning outcome is 2.11. Research the use of art elements and design principles in historical and contemporary craft work from their own or other cultures. As a department, we've decided to carefully select a range of clay craft pieces on which the students will base their research. So what are we hoping the students will learn here? Looking closely at the action verb research, we'll be asking students to examine very closely and investigate through discussion. As the students have looked at line and shape earlier in the year, the focus at this time will be in their relationship to pattern and movement. The focus here links in very well with learning outcome 1.4, demonstrate how they use drawings, to observe, record and analyse the human figure and the world around them. As a department, we've agreed to ask students to bring in a primary source that best reflects some of the art elements that we will be discussing in class. This could be anything from the natural or the man-made world. Working from this learning outcome, students will be making observational, two-dimensional or three-dimensional studies of their primary source in pencil, paint, clay or any media of their choice. Through these explorations, they will demonstrate their understanding of pattern and movement. Linking this experience with learning outcome 2.14, use media to create a craftwork. In this case, the overall emphasis will be on the exploration of clay. As this may be a student's first experience of clay, we have decided to focus on the basics, on how to build a simple form, through pinching, coil building or soft slab building. We will also focus on how to model a small piece of clay, using the addition or subtraction of clay. So how will we know what our students know? As a department, we have agreed to assess them in the following ways how they have used keywords in their discussion and their annotations, how they have selected a suitable primary source. We will also assess how they have demonstrated their understanding in their observational drawing in their visual art sketchpad, as well as observe how they have handled and manipulated the clay in their three-dimensional studies in clay. This concludes our short department plan. Thank you. In this Padlet, you can see an overview of a sample approach to an art department plan. The plan outlines an approach to using learning outcomes or parts of learning outcomes that first year students might develop in term three over a three week period. It is important to highlight here that these students would have already engaged with aspects of these learning outcomes and would have some prior knowledge and skills. In this case, the art department has agreed to use a gallery visit as a stimulus for this unit of learning and have highlighted particular aspects of the learning outcomes they wish to focus on. In developing learning outcomes 2.11 and 1.4, 
it has been agreed that students at this age and stage will research texture and pattern through using the artefacts in the gallery as a primary source stimulus. Learning Outcome 2.14 Use Media to Create Craft Work supports students to explore with a variety of materials. It should be noted that teachers have autonomy to develop these learning outcomes further and to devise classroom activities to best suit their students and their classroom context as appropriate. For example, one teacher in this art department may provide opportunities for their students to explore ideas through clay. Or another teacher in the department might with their students decide to explore and experiment through textiles using found materials such as corrugated card or fabric. Here the department has agreed that the key learning will be on understanding texture, pattern and the exploration of ideas through creating a variety of test pieces rather than one realised piece. Thus providing students with time to learn through experimentation, testing and trialling over this three week period. In agreeing modes of assessment, the art department has been careful to agree and align assessment with the learning outcomes. In this unit of learning, the assessment focus will be on evidence of student learning in their sketchpads, student annotation, teacher and peer feedback, a classroom display and opportunities for discussion and evaluation. In using this Padlet to collaboratively plan, the teachers in this department support one another through uploading and sharing visual prompts, website links and other resources that they may find useful. They've also allowed for opportunities to discuss, evaluate and reflect on any successes or challenges that may arise during and after this unit of learning. This is one sample approach to art department planning that you may find helpful. So this is a sample template we use in our CPD day and it's another approach to planning using the same learning outcomes. This template has been used with first year mixed ability students in mind. I'll give you a couple of minutes to read through this document. You will notice in all the department plans, there was a space for the department to reflect. Hopefully you found these different approaches to planning helpful. There is a copy of our learning outcome poster on jct.ie and you will also find a process wheel which might support you in your planning as well. So a quick recap of the key planning considerations. First of all, we need to consider the age and stage of our students. So we're choosing what is relevant or we're thinking about what is relevant or of interest to our students and appropriate based on the learning that has occurred up to this point. We are building on their prior learning. Secondly, we select a number of learning outcomes or parts of the learning outcomes across the three strands. The learning outcomes we pick are the focus for the unit of learning. Even though there will be other key skills, students will be using throughout the unit of learning. Thirdly, we might consider if we will use a theme or a stimulus and we consider the discipline or media, we might demonstrate the learning through. And as you could see from all our different approaches to planning, the discipline or the media was different in all of the different approaches. Next, we align assessment with the learning outcomes selected for the unit of learning. And again, the assessment is about stepping back from the learning and it is about us finding out how do we know that our students have achieved the learning we set out to achieve. So how do we know what they know? It is crucial that the assessment is directly aligned to the learning outcomes selected. The assessment will capture the learning that has taken place. And if students are to capture the assessment or to achieve the assessment, then they will have achieved the learning. And finally, reflection. And again, it is twofold. You are reflecting on what worked well during the unit, but also reflecting on how the learning outcomes were selected and developed. 
to ensure that some learning outcomes aren't overlooked. So we'll now take a short break for a presentation again to answer any questions that you might have, particularly around the context of learning outcomes and planning. So I'm going to hand you back over to Ruth now. Thanks, Gemma. OK, so the first of our questions in the, this area of learning outcomes and planning, the first one is uh, how many learning outcomes do I have to do in each year? OK, so teachers have the autonomy to select the number and the most relevant learning outcomes that are suitable to the age and stage and the context of their own students. So as Gemma mentioned, there are 45 learning outcomes in the visual arts specification to be engaged with over the course of the three years of junior cycle visual art. There's also no hierarchy of importance in the, in the learning outcomes in the specification that the numbers there are intended to help teachers in, in their planning and to support their planning. OK, so where might we start with learning outcomes and which ones are, are most suitable for first years? So we would definitely recommend um, beginning by, by using a smaller number of learning outcomes until you become more familiar and more confident in using them. Now, you are free to, you to choose any learning outcomes that you consider suitable for, for your own students and for the age and stage um, of where they are. Um, you may also consider um, using a theme or a stimulus with the learning outcomes to, to aid the students in generating their own personal response um, within their work. So a question um, around the planning template and where can you find the, um, one of the planning templates suggested there. So you can you can you can find the sample planning template um, issued there in the webinar on www.jct.ie under the planning section. And it's important to note that this is this is a sample only and that you're free to, to download it, to adapt it, to change it and devise it to, to suit your own context of what you need in terms of your own individual planning. Um, so we have a, a question here um, around department planning and does everyone in the same department have to teach the same thing at the same time? Um, so there, there is an expectation for an art department to plan collaboratively using the learning outcomes in the visual arts specification as Gemma outlined there a few moments ago. But once the learning outcomes and the key learning has been agreed at department level, teachers then have the autonomy to interpret the learning outcomes in a manner that is most relevant for the age and stage of their own students, their, their, the context of their school and the facilities available to each teacher, etc. So this allows for much greater flexibility in, in teaching and learning in, in, in various classrooms. OK, so that's actually the third question there in, a, in this um, section on, on learning outcomes and planning. So I'll pass back over to Gemma now. Thanks, Ruth. Um, so now we are just going to check back in with the question that we highlighted at the beginning of the presentation. And on the evening of the webinar, we asked teachers, what aspect of the new junior cycle visual arts specification are you most looking forward to engaging with in your art room? We were actually in, undated with responses that evening. Um, so I'm just going to highlight a, a couple here that um, came in. I am really looking forward to giving my students greater opportunity to explore their learning in their visual art sketchpads. And actually lots of things came in around sketchpads. People are seem to be very excited about the prospect of using um, different formats. With the focus on the artistic process in CBA1, I'm really looking forward to my students spending more time exploring their choice of media. So that was another one that came in. And again, we will be revisiting CBA1 um, in another webinar in the future. It will be interesting to see how the focus on critical and visual language will help my students to develop their literacy and communicative skills. So that's another one. And one more then, our school is a digital school and we will most certainly be trying to develop a digital sketchpad to run along with the students' physical sketchpad in the art room. So that will be really, really interesting as well. So you might remember this timeline from our workshops. Here is an overview of the three years for junior cycle visual art. This timeline can be accessed on jct.ie also. So again, with first years, you are selecting the most relevant learning outcomes for the age and stage of your students. And as mentioned earlier, we would suggest selecting a small number first. The beginning of second year is the exact same as first year. Again, you are selecting the most relevant learning outcomes for the age and stage of your students. 
and hopefully you were building on the prior knowledge built up in first year. After Christmas in second year is when CBA 1 takes place. We will be supporting you further with a full webinar dedicated to classroom based assessment 1 in early autumn next year. So before we um, close up, I might just pop back to Ruth just to see if there was any extra questions um, that may not have been relevant to different sections that came in. Thanks, Gemma. OK, so we, we have a couple of questions here um, around the visual arts sketchpad. Uh, the first being really, what is the visual arts sketchpad? So as you may remember from our CPD days um, and as stated in the specification, the visual arts sketchpad can, can take a number of formats and it's essentially um, a way of documenting the student learning. So our teachers, in, in collaboration with their students, are free to choose whatever format, their own format, that is most suitable to their own students and to their own classroom context. OK, so that's, that's the first question. T to follow on from that um, is a question around, can the same sketchpad be used for classroom-based assessments and classwork? So um, the short answer is yes, um, that the classroom-based assessment is exactly that. It is classwork learning and that the assessment of it is a snapshot of that learning that is to be reported on the junior cycle profile of achievement. OK, um, and we have uh, another question here around the life drawing exam. Uh, is there a life drawing exam? And uh, if not, when um, will I be doing life drawing? So just to confirm an important point here, there is no timed invigilated drawing examination in May. OK, so that's the first point. Um, but figure, figure drawing is obviously a very important component and uh, it's a component in learning outcome 1.4. Um, from the art strand and the evidence of student exploration in this area is a requirement for all students in all art classrooms. So this valuable experience um, will obviously be recorded in their visual arts sketchpad and how the students might engage with this learning outcome it is, is so broad and so varied. Uh, it, it could be explored in conjunction with uh, other learning outcomes. It could be part of a wider process of exploring themes and scenarios. And of course, it could be revisited many times over over the course of the three years of students' experience of visual art. Um, so that's actually the final question here, Gemma. So I will pass back over to yourself and say thank you. That's great. Thank you so much for, um, for that route. So all of our information this evening and in our workshops is taken from these three documents. Again, the framework for junior cycle, our visual art specification and the visual art assessment guidelines, which detail all of the information on both of our classroom based assessments. Online, in addition to our own website, jct.ie, there is access to the assessment toolkit, which has access to exemplars of student work that has been aligned with a national standard. Please follow us on Twitter for additional information and news. And the handle is JCT Visual Art. So on behalf of myself and the visual art team, I would like to thank you for your engagement for our very first webinar and certainly for your hospitality and contributions during our CPD days this year. We'd also like to thank our team of associates who have been working tirelessly to produce work with their students to deepen your understanding of the new specification in our workshops. And finally, we want to wish you and your students the very best of luck for the rest of the year. And please don't hesitate to email us with any further queries you may have. Thank you very much. <laughs>